Hi folks, welcome to the Trig Equations 1 video. This is pretty exciting. We're actually going to solve some Trig Equations. Yay! Basic Trig Equations look like these three that I wrote down here. Sine x equals negative a half, or cos x equals something, or tan x equals something. And basically, what they ask is, what angles produce these values of sine, cosine, and tangent? So what angle could I put here that's going to give me a sine of negative one half? There's a four-step method that we can use to solve these, and here's what it looks like. We're going to look for theta ref, the reference angle, in every case. We're going to use ASTC, which I talked about on the last video, uh, to be able to sketch. Then we'll find each angle in standard position, and finally write the solution. And we're going to hammer away at that procedure through all the videos that follow. So this is really the fundamental skill uh, and technique that we're developing here. So let's put it to use. There's downloadable notes in the video description below, so if you're finding it hard to see these values, just download the notes and you're welcome to do the video along with me. Uh, there's also a worksheet for once we're done in there. So here we go, we're going to solve sine x equals negative a half from 0 to 360. The steps say, find theta ref. And that's really asking, where do we have a sine of a half? Don't worry about the negative yet. We don't care about that. We'll deal with that later. But where is sine a half? Well, let me just go through the sine row. Oh, sine is a half at 30 degrees. OK. Now, step two is use ASTC. So here's where we deal with the fact that it's negative. So the reference angle is 30 degrees. Sine is negative. Let's see where. It's positive in 1, quadrants 1 and 2, all, and sine. It's going to be negative in quadrants 3 and 4, the T and C. So now, in step 3, so that was step 2, step 3, I'm going to sketch these in standard position. So I need to draw a reference angle of 30 degrees in quadrants 3 and 4. Let's determine what those angles are in standard position. So if I figured out the first one, it would be 180 plus another 30. I'm even going to write that down. 180 plus another 30. Hey, that would be the angle of 210 degrees. And that's one of our solutions. We're pretty much done, except that there was another angle. So let's find that one, too. This other one it would be like a full revolution and then take away that 30 degrees. So 360 minus 30 degrees would be 330. I'm calling these x1, x2. You could just call them each x, or you could use brace brackets. It really doesn't matter. But these should be the two angles that produce a sine of negative 1 half. And we can use a calculator to double check that this is true. I'll pull up my favorite graphing calculator here, and I need to make sure that I'm going to be in degree mode. Okay, And let's see. We said that one of the answers was 210 degrees. Let's see what the sine of 210 is. Sine 210. Oh my gosh, it's negative 0.5, which is what it said in the original equation. Let me try the other one, sine 330. Exciting stuff, huh? The sine really is negative 1 half for those two angles. So we found the angles that work, that make that equation true. Okay, and this was step four, was write our solution. Let's try it again. So we'll solve that other one on the first page. Cos x is root three over two. Step one, find theta ref. Okay, so I'm looking for a cosine of root three over two. I'm just gonna go through my cosine row Oh, there it is. It's at 30 degrees. OK, 
Okay. Now I think about ASTC. ASTC. Boo. Cosine's positive here. So where is it going to be positive? It's going to be positive in the all quadrant and in the cosine quadrant. That means quadrants 1 and 4. So even though we had the same reference angle, we will not necessarily have the same solutions. I'm going to draw that reference angle of 30 degrees in the first quadrant. And it said to do it in the fourth quadrant, too. Okay, obviously that first solution is just 30 degrees. Let's figure out the other one. It would be like a full revolution minus 30 degrees, or 360 minus 30. Those should be our two solutions. And again, we can check them on the calculator. You could do that, make sure you're in degree form. So the steps are find theta ref, use ASTC, which means just figuring out where it should be positive or negative, determine the angles in standard position, and write them down. Here's another one. Find where tan is negative 1. So theta ref. Okay, again, we're just looking for where tan is 1. Notice in the table, it doesn't give us any negative, so we just have to deal with where is tan 1. Hmm. Ah, it's at an angle of 45 degrees. Now in step 2, we think, all right, but tan was negative. So what quadrants does that put it in? It puts us in quadrant 2 and 4. Okay, they're all positive in quadrant 1. Only sine is positive in 2. Only tangent in quadrant 3 only cosine in quadrant 4. So now that I know my theta ref and what quadrants I'm in, I'm just going to draw the appropriate angles. And theta ref is always measured with the x-axis. Okay, now how are we going to figure out those angles in standard position? Well, that first one is like 180 put minus 45. And when you get comfortable, you'll just be doing that in your head. And that's 135 degrees. Angle 2 would be like 360, but minus 45. So x2 is 315 degrees. And if you check that in your calculator, those are both going to give you a tangent of negative 1. So we found the angles that satisfy the equation. Let's do one more here. Sine is negative 1. So theta ref, we're looking for where sine is 1. Don't care about the positive or negative. Sine is 1 over here at 90 degrees. ASTC. So we need sine to be negative. That means we're in quadrants 3 and 4. Now sometimes people find it tricky with 90 degrees, but it really just means the same thing that it's meant with every other angle. 90 degrees from quadrant 3 looks like this. 90 degrees from quadrant 4 looks like this. They happen to converge in the same place. So there's only going to be one angle that satisfies this equation. Let's figure it out. You could think of it as 180 plus another 90. Or you could think of it as 360 minus 90. Either way, we're going to get an angle of 270 degrees. And let's make sure that it works. Sine of 270. Come on, big money. Yay! Negative 1. 
it gives us the right value. It means that we've balanced this equation. In the next video, we'll look at doing the exact same thing, but using radian measure. See you soon.